fail to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. wisdom, you have blessed us with amazing bodies and intellects with which to work during our time in this world. Teach us to recognize our limitations so that we may more closely rely on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated, and at this time you may pass your prayer cards uh, to the uh, aisle.
The reading this morning comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, in the introduction. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the teacher meditates on the limitations of life in this world and the apparent futility of our efforts. In our finite existence, the only lasting source of meaning is the eternal God who created us. The reading begins. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain. When the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim, when the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when people rise up at the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint, when people are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred, then people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Everything is meaningless. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm comes from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream, they fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is in 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? 
So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by the steadfast love in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us, and as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Please stand. Preaching text continues in Ecclesiastes, but first uh, a parable from Jesus from Luke 12 of uh, the futility of life. And he told them this parable, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, self, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. The preaching text continues. Not only was the teacher wise, but he also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words, and what he wrote was upright and true. The words of the wise are like goads. They're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. Of making many books there is no end, and much study wearies the body. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite children forward for a children's sermon. I'd like to invite children forward for a children's sermon. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Oh, you're getting your thumbs ready. I was about to ask. How are we doing today? So we can give thumbs up for good, thumbs down for bad, thumbs middle for middle. How are we doing today? Yeah. Okay, one and a half. Yep. Okay. Mostly good. Mostly good this morning. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. So I have a question for you. My question is this. How many of you have ever failed at something? You wanted to do something and it just didn't work out. It's okay. Most of us have. A few of us maybe haven't, or at least don't want to admit it if we haven't, okay? Uh, how many of you have worked really, really, really hard at something, gotten your hopes really up for it, and then it still didn't work out? So what, not only was it a failure, it was a really disappointing failure. Oh, yeah. Some of us have done that, too. Uh, what did you do about that? Did you just give up and never try again? Or do we, what do we do when we fail? What, what's something we can do? Or something... Keep trying, yeah? Did you ever learn anything? Yeah? Keep trying. Take a break and try again. That's a great, great strategy, great advice, yeah? Did you ever, did you learn anything from failing? Did it teach you anything? Did you learn maybe what not to do? Maybe, yeah? Yeah. Maybe don't do that. Maybe, yeah? Yeah. Maybe don't do that. Oh, yeah, and it kind of ruined the project. Yeah, exactly, all of those things. So uh, one of the things, this is, this is something that you're going to learn as you get older, is you don't just have failures when you're kids. Did you know that? Even grown-ups try to do things and it doesn't work out. It happens for all of us all our lives long. We try things. We make mistakes. They don't pan out the way we want them to. They don't work the way we want them to. We try a new project. It doesn't happen right. 
Maybe the job that we're working at doesn't work the way we want it to. All sorts of things. Hey, Naomi, I'd like you to sit down, please. Thank you. Uh, it just doesn't work out for us sometimes. It keeps happening like that. Did you know, though, that we have somebody who always loves us no matter what our failures are, no matter what we've done wrong? Did you know that we have a God who is even able to take failures and put them back together and make them into successes? We do have a God that does that. So even when things don't work out the way we want to, we can keep trying because we trust in the one who has promised to us to bring everything to a good future for us. That's the promise that Jesus has made to you. That's the promise that Jesus makes to you in baptism, in communion. Jesus makes his promise through the words even that I'm speaking right now, that you, no matter what, will always find success with God. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for giving us everything we need and for being with us even when things don't work out like we want. Help us to trust you always, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming forward. You can head on back now. Beloved people of God, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What a series of texts we got to read today, huh? I made sure to pack all of the hard ones in for us just uh, today. Meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless, yells the teacher. Or uh, Psalm 90, which I didn't point out, but is uh, the only psalm attributed to Moses. Psalm 90, which says, uh, every, all of our lives, they pass away like a dream. They're like the grass which is uh, new in the morning and is dried up and gone by the evening. Teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And then that parable of Jesus, of course, which only makes things harder, of the rich man who is a fool who does exactly what uh, successful farmers are supposed to do. He builds bigger barns to store up for himself. He has a retirement account built up. And then that night, he never gets to use it. His days come to an end suddenly that night. Meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless. The book of Ecclesiastes is a book of wisdom, but it's not the book of confident wisdom you might expect to hear. This isn't the words of a guru who is telling you exactly what to do to find success in life. This is not uh, a, a, a self-help book, a, an advice for finding uh, the right way to do things to ensure you live a long, happy, and prosperous life. No, this is the wisdom of somebody who has learned, apparently the hard way, that things don't always work out the way you want them to go. That even if you do everything right, if you have everyone in your corner, that even if everyone you meets right, the same fate. Ecclesiastes is a strange title for a book, as I said, but all it means is one who is in front of the ecclesia, that is the people who are gathered together, what becomes translated in the New Testament as the church, actually. So we could call an ecclesiaste, I guess, as somebody who is speaking to a group gathered together, a teacher or a preacher, perhaps. Today, I get to be your ecclesiast uh, here, speaking to you, the ecclesia of God. So this is how it opens. It says, the words of the teacher, the Ecclesiast, the words of the teacher, son of David, king of Jerusalem, meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless, everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing. The ear never has its fill of hearing. What has done will be done. What has been done uh, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Meaningless, meaningless, utterly meaningless. Now, who is this person, this teacher who's speaking? 
sounds a lot like it could be Solomon. It doesn't say for sure, but if you remember, King Solomon was the, the king who was full of wisdom. We're actually going to hear his story more in a few weeks uh, of him asking God for wisdom and being granted it. Solomon is uh, credited with many of the, the wisdom sayings in Scripture, especially the book of Proverbs. And Solomon was incredibly successful. Everything seemed to go his way. He uh, had a time of peace uh, that he inherited from his father, David. Uh, The kingdom expanded greatly economically and in territory during his reign. There were all these great building projects, including the building of the temple itself during his time. If anyone was a success, it was King Solomon. And yet here in this book... This book that is either attributed to Solomon or someone very like him. Meaningless, meaningless, he says. Everything is meaningless. He goes on talking about uh, everything that he has. He has uh, great building projects. He built houses for himself. He planted vineyards. He had all sorts of, of slaves. He had herds and flocks. He had the treasure of other kings and provinces. He had many wives. All the delights of a man's heart, he writes. In all this, I had wisdom which stayed with me. And I saw, he said, that wisdom is better than folly, just as light is better than darkness. The wise have eyes with which to see, while the fool walks as though it is dark. But I came to realize the same fate overtakes them both. Meaningless, meaningless, all is meaningless. He goes on a little bit later. This will be familiar to you. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search, a time to give up, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to be silent, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. We've heard this before. All of it cycles around and around, and it seems to have no purpose to any of it. It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Meaningless, meaningless, he says. Everything is meaningless. Whatever is has already been done. Whatever will be, will be done again. He talks about money. He's somebody who knows what it is to have wealth. Whoever loves money, he says, never has enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their income. This too is meaningless. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owners except to feast their eyes on them? On the other hand, the sleep of a laborer is sweet whether they eat little or much, but as for the rich, their abundance permits them no sleep. Even success becomes its own trap for the wealthy. Suddenly, all of their life is surrounded around keeping their stuff safe. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Now, we hear this, and especially if you're somebody who hasn't experienced a lot of uh, failure in your life, especially if you're somebody who has been successful, if you're somebody who is confident that if you do things the right way, things will turn out well for you, we read something like this and it just seems depressing. What's even the point of trying if everything is meaningless, if there's no guarantee that things will work out for us? And in fact, the only real guarantee we get in this life is that One day it will come to an end, whether we were rich or poor, righteous or unrighteous, wise or foolish, the same fate awaits us all, says the teacher. What even is the point of trying then? Well, he reflects on this. He reflects on this and he says, I concluded that the righteous and the wise... And what they do are in God's hands, even if they don't know whether love or hate awaits them in the future. All share a common destiny. And so he says, go, eat your food with gladness. 
Drink your wine with a joyful heart, for God has already approved of what you have. Always be clothed in white. Always anoint your head with oil. Enjoy life with your spouse whom you love all the days of this meaningless life that God has given you under the sun, all your meaningless days. For this is what you have been given in life. This is your labor under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Now, that doesn't seem to answer the question. doesn't seem to offer a path to success there. Except that something has changed. The life is meaningless. The days are meaningless. That is, there's nothing we can build out of them that is lasting. There is no legacy that will outlive, you know, a few generations after us that we are building. Nobody will remember my name in a thousand years, let alone probably 200. And yet, where does my fate lie? And yet, where in God's hands? All share a common destiny. God has already given this life. Meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless is a terrible word to hear when your entire life is a task, a project which you are to accomplish. But meaningless, meaningless, everything is meaningless doesn't have the same sting when life is a gift for you to enjoy. When life is something that God is giving and still preserving for you, bread for the eater, wine to make the human heart glad, to quote Psalm 104. I had a professor uh, who often would say, uh, in a time when everything has a price, when everything is bought and sold for a price, he said it was a great freedom to be worthless. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. This is hard for us to embrace, like I said, if we found much success in life. I find that people who have experienced dramatic failure in life have an easier time of this. Some of the wisest saints that I have known are those who have gone through uh, AA, for example, Alcoholics Anonymous, who have had to confront their failures and make amends and move through them. They know that the life, their life is not the sum of their successes. They know that their life is controlled and invaded by powers that are too great for them. And so they know what it is to put their trust in one who is above all of that, to entrust in the one who is eternal, to bring any source of eternal meaning to the things that they do. And in the meantime, that frees them up to enjoy the life that is in front of them, to do the work faithfully that is before them, even if it may not work out, even if the consequences may not be what they foresaw, even if in 10, 20, 100 years, nobody will remember any of it anyway. This is where he comes to the conclusion, which is our reading uh, for this morning. Remember your creators in the days of your youth, he says. This is better to learn while you're young. (laughs) <laughs> than when you're old, like me, perhaps, he's saying. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, before the years approach when you find no pleasure in them, before everything grows dark, when you have a hard time hearing the birds, when you're scared of what's out on the streets or falling from heights, uh, when, uh, uh, when uh, people finally go to their eternal homes and mourners go about in the streets. He says, remember your Creator earlier than that. Remember it in your youth for meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. And then the final summation, all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the duty of all mankind. God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. To put that another way, You are not in control of making sure you have a good legacy. You are not responsible for making sure your life amounts to something. You are not the one in charge of being remembered as a successful person. All you are to do is to fear, love, and trust God. We can read all of that in that word fear. Fear, love, and trust God, for God is the one who keeps track of everything that is done 
God is the one who keeps track of the legacies that are made, and God is the one who judges, who decides what is worth and what ought to be cast away. And this God has not been silent or distant, but has spoken. He is speaking even now, even to you, making you a promise that your future comes from God alone, that your successes and your failures, your work as important as it is, as God-given as it is, is not what defines you, but God's promise, God's choice, that you are God's child, that you are God's beloved, and that with you, God is well-pleased. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation and a world in need. Let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, for justice, and for the welfare of children. Hear us, O God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. 
We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O God. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us. Grant us faith to trust in your unfailing love. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we humbly thank you for your goodness to us and ask that you would continue to supply what we need. Receive now the thanksgivings and concerns of those gathered before you now. We pray for healing for Marna of cancer. We pray for Joan Brady and her family as she prepares to enter heaven. May she may forever be at peace. We pray for the family of Paul Ingebrigtsen as they grieve and for the family of Jim Jensen as they, breathe, as they grieve. We pray for Janet Navert as she continues to struggle with health issues. We pray for Al Fredrickson in the hospital. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. 
Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. Some of you remembered already, and that was great. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And he broke it and he gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is my body given for you. Do this. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We welcome all the baptized to uh, come forward for uh, communion or to receive communion in your seats. Also, if you'd like to come forward and request a blessing, uh, you can indicate that just by putting your arms up like this and letting me know when you come forward. There is red wine in the blue chalice and white grape juice in the plain chalice uh, if you require uh, no alcohol. There is uh, also gluten-free uh, bread available in addition to the regular bread if you uh, so require. Uh, Come forward with uh, those cups, empty cups. Uh, bring those forward for the, uh, to receive the wine or the grape juice. Jesus Christ is present here with this bread and this wine to give himself fully and completely to you, both in word and in, uh, in the elements of the sacrament.
Those of you who are communing in your seats, if you take out that piece of bread, hold it in front of you, for this promise of Jesus applies even to this. This is the body of Christ given for you. Please eat the bread. And then do the same with the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Please drink the cup. And a blessing for you and for all, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Uh, a couple announcements. Uh, there is a, a Children, Youth, and Family Committee meeting right after, uh, well, after you get food in the fellowship hall. So noon, it says, and it's going to be meeting. Is that going to be meeting in this room right here, the conference room right here? Okay. They'll be meeting in this conference room right here. Um, the other uh, thing to know coming up is. Uh, this Saturday is going to be the memorial service for Lyle and Cindy Kaplinger. Uh, that's at 11 o'clock this Saturday with a reception uh, following in the fellowship hall. Um, and everybody is invited, uh, welcome to come uh, to that. Um, and then also uh, notice our Holy Week worship schedule is uh, here. Holy Week's coming up. We're not far away. This next Sunday is uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, that will be a normal uh, service, Palm Sunday worship, although we will start in the fellowship hall and process in for Palm Sunday. Um, and then our Maundy Thursday service will be here at 7 o'clock. Good Friday is going to be a joint worship service at Salem Lutheran at 7 o'clock on Friday. Um, and then back here uh, at, uh, for Easter Sunday uh, at the normal times with uh, uh, 8.45 Easter breakfast uh, 
and uh, that's open until 10, uh, and then worship at the normal time at 10.30. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, if uh, college scholarship applications are something that you're interested in applying uh, to, our uh, deadline for receiving those is uh, April 15th, 2024, no later than 11.59 p.m. It's right there. So make sure you notice that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, at least start by 10.30 on that day. Yeah, at least, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, and, and that is a hard deadline, so uh, do be aware of that. Um, that's all the announcements I have. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Do be aware of that. That's all the announcements I have. Are there any other announcements? Yes. We need either one more person to bring soup on Wednesday or a few less people to come on Wednesday. <laughs> so if somebody could see me afterwards and wants to bring great. soup, that would be great. So you need one more soup for our Wednesday so evening soup supper. Our last great. soup supper of Lent. So uh, please be, uh, come and join that. Any other, or, or fewer people to come, but I really prefer the more soup option, yeah. Brad, did you have an announcement? Yesterday, we have a spring cleaning day, and Brad, did you have an announcement? Yeah. Brad, you have an announcement? Yeah. Brad, you have an announcement? Wow, excellent. So 31 people came for the spring cleaning day yesterday, so thank you to everyone who, uh, who organized that and was here to do the work. Any other announcements? Who organized that and was here to do the work. Please stand to receive God's blessing. The peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace, share your bread. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, share your bread.